Welcome to another episode of the BNW Show. Just want to let you guys know that you can always reach out to us in any response, uh, comments, questions, or even show topics on the BNW Show One at gmail.com. You can also watch our show monthly, last Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and that will be Arizona time. So I believe that's Mountain Standard Time, and that will be on Facebook, or you can watch us on um, Twitter. Um, Instagram, and also YouTube. So, with that said, welcome to the next edition or episode of the BNW Show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. You know what it is. Black History Month. Yeah. You know what it is. Like the intro music, got a little microphone. You guys like, wait, but wait, why are they in the studio? Well, the studio's doing some little makeover and changes. Everything's a little production thing, you know, as it steps and grows. So without further ado, we just going to pop into yeah. the show and get right really on the topic yeah. of the day, and, which is... And God's on vacation. That's right. And God's, God's on, vacation. on vacation. That's so, right. Know, when God's God takes vacation, vacation, we got to make plans. That's right. He's on vacation. <laughs> so, you know, what's up, IW World? You know, that's Internet World. You know, we're not just on Facebook anymore. We expanded, so we got to grow a little bit, that's get right. to the next level. So, that's what's right. happening, at IW World? This your boy Lavelle. This my man, AP. You know, and I, you know, it's Black History Month. So, you know, we got to rep- represent our blackness, you know, what right. I'm saying, to the that's fullest. Right. You know, that's, that's right. 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 Yeah, I don't have that bro. I'm gonna let y'all I'm go still, ahead and see I'm this. I'm still wearing cowboy. Some history I'm on still this. Wearing cowboy. <laughs> I'm Not still wearing cowboy. Not the cowboy. So, uh, without that said, um, you know what, man? Let's let's go ahead and, and get into it. You know, I know we're on a little. Uh, we start a little late here, so uh, time's not always in our favor like it usually is. So let's just go ahead and yep. pop into it and yep. run down to it. So, well, first thing I want to I want to say I want to let everybody know. So, last month we. Um, I told you we, we were going to do black words to a white guy. Well, fortunately, unfortunately, that uh, was a little much for my friend here, which is not at all what my intentions were. Um, and as anything that this show has taught me is about understanding. Right? So uh, we were just trying to use language as a color barrier, which it is not. Language is probably the most beautiful thing in the world, mm-hmm. right? It, mm-hmm. it expands cultures. It expands uh, generations. It, it is why it's the, the, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, right? It's not freedom to speak English. It's not freedom to speak German. It's not the freedom. It's freedom of speech. Whatever your speech is, you have the freedom to speak it. And um, going from different cultures, it's it's a beautiful thing to have culturally different language. Um, and and to say that it was there's black words and there's white words. There's white words like boy boy howdy. They don't get much more. Okay. More than that. Okay. But, you know. Well, so this cracker that's a white word, black word. Depends if you put it on your soup. It's a white word. <laughs> <laughs> so, so besides you know nigga black word what we, we, i mean as as we as we have discussions off air right okay right. so you know one we're this discussion is bleeding over so you guys oh like they don't always get along no we don't always yeah. get along yeah. on shit and, and, and that's why i'm glad this came up because right. it shows that though we're we talk things civilly right we don't always get a lot. We don't always agree on everything. So this is a topic I wanted to bring to you to show you we don't agree on anything, on everything. All right. Right? So I'm glad it came up. I'm glad him and I got to discuss it Which civilly. The whole point of right. the show. Exactly. Being up, what's the difference between black and white? Ignorance without the communication and understanding between. So right. that's what we're we basically doing. So, um, I mean, we, we, we talk with, like, you say like black words. I say okay. He says black words, and I understand where he's coming back, coming from. Because if you look at certain areas of where one may have grew up, you know they don't hear certain verbiage um, most predominantly heard from the black 
black community. So right. I understand where that label right. of black word comes at. So, you know, I, I personally didn't like, uh, don't like black words because it seems like you're putting a label on a sp specific uh, vocabulary right. or verbiage, right. which I know that's not your right. intent. Right. But, but at the same time, right. like just because one black man or white man does it right. doesn't mean it belongs, like, like okay, it's you, not my you, ownership, right? You, right. Still, you see a black man smoke pot, right. doesn't mean black men smoke pot. Goddamn, if white people haven't been smoking pot longer than black people have, there you go. So, but we don't say, but it now in, in that essence, we associate pot to black, right? Exactly. Is it? Thank you, Snoop, right? Exactly, <laughs> thank you, Snoop, right? You know, uh, I, I mean, I think Willie Nelson's been along, been around a lot longer than uh, Snoop has, yes, so sir, I totally agree, right? But why is it? Which is one of the questions which we have to pose to here yeah. is maybe that's our big uh, April topic is it's four twenty right could be you right. know so that's our why was that like the black man's uh, drug of choice first of all weed is not a drug okay it's, it's a plant but why is that here or there four twenty <laughs> so why would that do you ever think why is that associated to black like cocaine is just associated to maybe white or excuse me or Colombian or or meth is just associated to basically white people well but um to put, know, put those things even further so right. cocaine is associated to the the, the upper echelon white whereas mm -hmm. meth is to the lower echelon white mm -hmm. even though so there's there's plenty of black and hispanics and and asian that's... and the upper echelon has done cocaine right and and lower echelon who who have done right. cocaine and upper echelon who've done meth yeah, yeah. Right yeah. I, look, I, look, I know. Look, I keep there. looking there. I know. Yeah, we little studio did change. We, we keep looking. We, we got we got a new camera, so we're right. we're uh, learning our our view, our point of view. Right, so, point of view. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll look at you guys yeah. now. We won't look at us. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to watch comments too. So right. That's, you that's know. So thing. we got. I tell you, we doing things. Technology. We haven't even had that intern yeah. fired wherever it was. But let's right. get back on topic. Okay. So, so anyways, mm -hmm. so our topic today, right, is actually. Not Black History Month, but the history of Black History Correct. Month. Correct. So, as then, my black man over here is going to go ahead and enlighten us, because I, for one, have a couple questions about the uh, black community themselves. So, I'm going to go ahead and listen um, and indulge myself in a little education right now. Right. So, take it away there. So, I, I myself like to consider myself, uh, I don't want to say a buff, but like, a lover of history because I'm not a buff because I, I I couldn't recite to you, um, like when the Pilgrims first figured out anal sex in Jamestown. You know that's that's yeah. Just don't have if that. you are studying that, well, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know sometimes it's like the first or like the thing that's public. But anyways, uh -huh. uh, but I do. I'm a, I'm a, I love history. I love reflecting on history, seeing where we've been. And use it as a guide as where we're going. Right. Right. Um, not to recycle history, because that's right. what a lot of people do. They'll right. recycle history and say, well, this is the way it's always been, so this is the way we have to do the it. Status quo acceptance. Right. No. Uh, tradition's great, but tradition's meant to be broken. Because before those traditions, there were other traditions. It's not records. Right. Well, like before Jesus. So the tradition now for Christianity is, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, before that, there was no Jesus. There was no mm -hmm. Christianity. So the tradition was uh, was Jewish, or or pagan, or Buddhism. yeah. So there was there was other things before the tradition of mm -hmm. Christianity. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. it's ever ever evolving or adapting or changing whatever you want to call it. That you know, if you're you don't like the word evolution because you're too Christian or Catholic, right. or you don't like the word uh, changing because you're too scientific, then it's evolved. Whatever your thing is. Right. Traditions evolve. Right. Okay. So um, in my in my looking into the history of black history, my history, right. it was probably our assumption that it was a white thing created to separate out the black guy. So here, let's appease the black guy and say, right. here, here's a month for you guys. Right. Shut up. Be happy. Right. 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 Which is common. Because right. who would think that, hey, the black man has enough power to, to actually designate himself his own month? Right. Well, well history reveals a little cynicism. In yeah. Actually, so black history, 
Uh, it wasn't actually a month. When it first started, it was in 1926. 19, the, the Depressions. Before the Depression. Right. Right. A little bit before the Depression. A little bit before. Right? before, before. Um, so, like, right after World War II. Right. Or, sorry, one. Right after the World War One, going into the Depression before World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, it was proposed by a historian named Carter G. Woodson, who was a dean for Western University, Western Virginia University. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so yeah, we got we have a little board behind us. This this is one of the advantages to not being in the studio. We have a whiteboard or right. a whiteboard with a black marker. Today, whiteboard with a black marker. <laughs> power, baby. It's right. all about that power. Right. So, um, so again, Carter G. Woodson, but he pitched it as a week uh, as Negro History Week. Um, and it was actually picked up by West Virginia, South Carolina, and Delaware, as far as states-wise, and as well as the city of Baltimore and the city of Washington, D.C. It's about six, seven states right there. Uh, three states, two cities. Okay, three states, two cities. Right. So they, they picked it up and said, why not, you know? And uh, he actually, it was pitched as the second week or the third week in February mm -hmm. because it aligned with... Um, Abraham Lincoln's birthday yep. and, and uh, Frederick Douglass's birthday. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who Frederick Douglass is, he was the first nominated vice president. He wasn't vice president, but he was the first black nominated vice president. So, uh, so they, you know, those, so those are two big figures Mind that the black too. community still celebrates today, right. as they should. Um, so they said. This are the weeks that we should celebrate Black History, right? Or, or Negro History Week. Mm -hmm. At that, that time, Negro was the right. word. That right. was the word. Um, but in 1970, um, students and professors from Kent University promoted it and decided to celebrate it as Black History Month. So, if from 26 to 1970, people finally said, "Why only a week?" We you know, coming to the 70s, we've done so much more. Mm -hmm. Why not? I think we need a whole month, right? So, so they started celebrating as Black History Month, and then by 1976, Gerald Ford, president at the time, right, decided he recognized it during the U.S. bicentennial, and he urged Americans to seize the opportunity to honor the often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavors throughout our history. I don't know if I'm just one of many or I could just be one of few, but I just always wondered how come Frederick Douglass isn't on any money? Because he was never uh, full, fully in office. True. Right? But, yeah. And, I, and we say, well, well neither was uh, Benjamin Franklin. I get that. Mm -hmm. You know, but he was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. And yeah, he has the little political connection. Yeah, yeah, Frank he was Douglas, in there. You know, um, a man accomplishing that feat at that time, it, everything was uphill. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, everything was uphill. Yeah, and then, and then you know, and you know, the the big names that we obviously celebrate right now, beyond <laughs> is the is the obvious Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, do do black people really know past? I know we do know, but common folks, first thing we know that we're celebrating equivalent to Black History Month. Oh, we start right. thinking of right. Martin Luther King, right? And and and, and to be Muhammad honest, Ali. when yeah, uh, so to be honest, like when yeah, when time. when white people want to associate themselves with 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 black folk, or they want to like, oh, you know, they always argue for Dr. Luther King. Yeah, but right. but it's like the easy to the go comment, to, the comment, right? right? Right. It's like to say oh, I love baseball so much because of Babe Ruth. Right. Not a fan of it. Right. You well, know. you know Babe. Ruth. Everybody knows Babe Ruth. You know. Right. Let's just let's just let's just go to the biggest and most common right. star. Right. Right. You know. Right. And, and, you know, there's, no. and there's others common people. You know, Jackie Robinson. I mean, no, and don't get us wrong. These people have accomplished a lot for what what they did, right? So we can try, we can try this. Uh, we got sports, or we can say that and go into the other point. So let's just right. go down the uh, the list of, of basically of unknown, but right. known. So, so 
first off, so there's a list list of African American firsts. Yes, there's and, a list. And and to set record straight, uh, Black Panther was the first black superhero, but the Falcon kind of forever. But, but the Falcon was the first African American superhero. So there you go. Right. Yeah, we are comic geeks. Yes. So you know. yeah, just trying to throw my geekness out there. Yeah. Like, you know. um, and Canada does also have a black superhero. Just a little message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that comic book. Who was the black guy in the comic book? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, X. Uh, uh, not X. We was talking about uh, Alpha X. Flight. Yeah, there was a black guy in the golf flight. I don't know. He was not. Uh, he was not a main main alpha flight uh, group member, but he came in and out. He did work one more. We'll pull up our comic. Yeah, we we'll have to go, go back. back on that. We'll have to go back with that. Yeah, because the, the ones I know of, of course, you know, there's besides Falcon mm -hmm. and Black Panther, there's Luke Cage, mm -hmm. uh, which is all they're all Marvel and mm -hmm. Blade, but but, uh, right. uh, but on the DC Blade side. Don't. On the DC side, you got John Stewart, which is huge. He's the first uh, Black Green Lantern, which is mm -hmm. that's the most powerful organization in the galaxy, or the, in the universe. So, you know, but I mean, that's once again, why out. with that? Why is it that is we know Green Lantern as to be a white man, right? We don't know of John Stewart. Yeah, right. the movies don't even show. They show the alien, not a black man, right? Why well, is it Captain America white? But well, actually, all the what, what, was supposed to be when, uh, was, original, was a black man of super, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, was, with the he, super soldiers. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was first see, originally proposed as, as a black. Guy. We can't give black.
he's right. Best person for the job. Mm-hmm. And I, I can stand here to say, I think Condoleezza Rice would be a great candidate for presidency for 2020. That's just me. You're coming out of character. I, I do. I, I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. Yeah. But, you know, okay. You know, yeah. I agree um, with that. But hold up. Let me go back over to my role. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Role. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. I mean, those are those are good things. But just like everybody else, they did a good service to to our country. And right. when that service is done, it's done. I mean, do we really have to say we need a Condoleezza Rice Day? Do we need a, a Thurgood Marshall Day? I mean, do we need a Colin well, we, Powell Day? We got we got President's Day, right? And that's actually in February as well. Uh, we could also there's uh, we got governor, we got a, a, a senator. For, so the first governor. PBS pin, Pinchback, mm-hmm. uh, first senator, uh, Hiram Rhodes Revels, uh, the first general appointed into the United States military was uh, for the Army, Brigadier General uh, Benjamin Oliver Davis Sr. And he got that, he got his, his one star, 1940. 1940. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. The governor. So try, try to take a guess what state PBS Pinbrock, or Pinbrock uh, back became governor in the year 1872. Mississippi? Not far off. Louisiana. Oh. Right? You would probably think a northern state, right? All right. Right? No. There's a far south in the state that you can Louisiana. go. Louisiana. In the 1800s? Yeah. He was, he was appointed to governor. In 1872. Mm, them plantation folk, woo, right? They weren't happy. Right? Okay, get they this. They weren't happy. First senator to be voted in a senator, okay, 1870. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harem Rhodes uh, Bevels, guess what state? Mississippi. 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 Got See, that one. Gonna hit. one of them going to be Mississippi. <laughs> M-I, cricket letter, cricket letter, I, cricket letter, cricket letter, I. I'm fine. <laughs> I'd continue with the military. So you have a, uh, you have, there's, so they could have two astronauts. So the first who was appointed or, appointed, or, or selected as an astronaut, mm-hmm. which is uh, Robert Henry Lewis Jr., 1967. Appointed but, astronaut? Yeah, because that's you get appointed. You get appointed to be an 1967. Astronaut. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't get to go into space because of a of a fatal car crash that's that year. Mm-hmm. But so the first astronaut into space was Guion. I think I said Guion Bluford. Uh, and he went up in the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1983. And that's prior to the explosion of the Challenger. Right. And there was actually a black man in the explosion that, that year. Right. There I was. didn't get his name because right. I don't think we need to know the first black man who died in a space incident. Yeah, that, because that's not it's, appropriate. It's like a movie. Right. Yeah. Okay. So beyond this, what about who's the first black author? So we celebrated Jackie Robinson for being this you know, great sportsman. Right, but why not? Why not pick on the intellect? Who was the first black author? W. E. D. Du Bois. <laughs> Juniper Hammond. Who's that? Uh, he wrote the book, nineteen seventy or sorry, 1760, called "An Evening Thought: Salvation by Christ with Pentelin Cries." Okay, so if you notice what we're talking about, we're saying all these people that done all these accomplishments. What about the question? The question we're asking is how come I don't know these people? Right. That could be what you're asking right now. Who are these people? Right. Yes, black people that have done things, have done things that we wouldn't even imagine of doing or accomplishing feats at a time mm-hmm. that are just unacceptable. You see what I'm right. saying? So why don't we know about this in our history? Right. Why? Because I don't want you to know how glorified and how amazing your people are and what have they done for this country because as much as it is American history, it's our history, mm-hmm. you know? So we're only gonna depict and, sh- and, and share what we want, you know, because all of this should be in black history courses during the school. Uh, but, sh- but I'm sure you could after you graduate elementary school, mm-hmm. after you graduate junior high, mm-hmm. after you graduate high school, there you go. and you get into community college, mm-hmm. and you and you pick 
you go into the university and you right. pick your major as history, and right. black history, right. I'm sure you'll keep, right. take a couple of courses paying $30,000 a year right. to learn about black history. Right, which is a damn shame. But yeah, we can learn about Huckleberry Finn and all the nigga, 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 What's his name? That's not Huckleberry Finn. Yeah. <laughs> Huckleberry Finn's the, the dog. You're the <laughs> Hannah Barbera. Oh, um, 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 Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. And, uh, yeah, and Huckleberry. The river, you know it's early, so you oh, know, is sometimes that? I gotta wake up. But yes, yes, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, got, you got Nick, Nick or Jim. There was a famous in, story. Right. You know. Yeah, and the Tom Sawyer story and, and, Huck, and Huckleberry Finn. But this is a shame. Yeah. I knew about that yeah. because it was taught in school. Yeah. In school. Before Martin Luther King. And it was written by Mark Twain, right? Which is fine. Mark Twain's great, great humorist. Great author, great humorist. And uh, he wasn't he wasn't being malicious, call him nigger Jim. Right. That just at he this just at those time. times, that's just the verb that was the word, right? So nigger, negroes, black, African American. And now back to niggas again. Right. So, you know. So that that'll probably be the next connotation. In, right. in about 20, 20 years. So right. are, are you Af are you uh, white? No. Are you Latin? Are you nigga? Are you uh, Asian American? No. You know, right. That'll be the census. It'll be, it'll be on, on the census. Thing. It'll be on there because it's going to change soon. Right. It's just like Martin Luther King had a message. Okay. He had a message. He had a message that he wanted to drive for the black community. You know why? Because that's the message I wanted him to deliver. Okay. But everybody else is doing stuff and inventing things for your people, for us, I don't want you to, to think like that because you, then you're going to be wanting to do things for your right. people and want you to accomplish things and be bigger and greater than what we are. Right. We can't have this. Once again, this is our history. Right. It's not black history. It's American history. Right. It's our history. Right. You notice how we only talk about Thanksgiving and you know how that picture of Thanksgiving is. Oh, we were real nice. There was no violence. We, yeah. we got along we're, with everybody. Yeah, we're, we're very uh, right. We're cordial with those Indians. Yeah. Oh, no, you no. see what I'm saying? Oh, no, right. No. This is the story. Nor, we nor vice to. versa. Right. We can't have it. <laughs> Man, we had people on upheaval on me. I don't know what the fuck to do. Because the truth is the truth. And that's some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, so when we talk about the message delivered, Martin Luther King had a message. Yeah. Okay, well, I, for one, have nine inventors that invented things that changed our life forever and without these things we wouldn't be living how we are today so i'm going to go down this list okay so who i have that made our lives better first of all the person that invented the iron board was a black person it was a black lady named sarah boone in 1892 didn't even know that an ironing board something so very simple wouldn't even know that there was no glorification of that there was no um no uh what we, when we say so no admiration given for that mm -hmm. you know it's like hey this is what you did first person that went ahead and let's just say uh co-invented the home security system was mary van Britten brown in 1966. of course it's a little knob and tube wiring you know just the, the way the makeup is of the, of the house and things at that time, but that's everyday way, life. That's the way TV was, it was and, just knobs and tubes. And who would think that in 1966, they was thinking of home security systems? Forward thinkers, you know, generational thinkers, people that you come have at a time that you may not see at another time of your life at all. You know, just like uh, kids is living during Barack Obama right. as president. Some people is gonna be like, yo, I've never lived during a black president. Some people is like, a black president is normal to me because this is all I've had. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a white president? I didn't know presidents, you see what I'm saying? So it's just a awakening, but people that know history know that personally me, first black president I ever seen in my life. But history tells us we have four black presidents way, 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 way long ago. I, I couldn't even talk about it. Don't even know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they stood for. I wasn't living at that time. And history never told us. Even now, history doesn't want to tell you about those four black presidents. We always want to think that, hey, Barack's the first black president. Okay, history, but let's keep moving. You know the stoplight? That Yeah, the stoplight. The thing we always see, invented by Garrett Morgan in 1923. Got a little side story. Steam engine, real McCoy, invented by a black man. That's how the saying came up, you know, about the real McCoy, Robert E. McCoy. 
black man invented the steam engine. Replicas were made, kept breaking down because they tried to be like the original steam engine. Hence the saying, uh, it ain't the real McCoy. Mm -hmm. Something so simple. But history, why do I want to, once again, give that admiration to this black man? Because that's going to maybe spark uh, a flame. Mm -hmm. You know, I got Martin Luther King over there. Mm -hmm. I don't need too many flames running around here. It's hard to put those fires well, up. Well, we can't control them like that. that if I that's to go off of your topic. So, so um, musically, when you see uh, oh, a, a black him. a black man in music, I got him in the right, bag. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. they generally start off. Uh, mm -hmm. for, sorry, Hammer. Right, MC Hammer. Right. Yeah, we'll say uh, and, oh. and, but, but before that, also you had uh, like DJ Jazz Jeff. Right. So yeah. it's always a MC or a DJ or you know, mm -hmm. you have that that rap group, and there's always somebody who's the disc, the DJ, right? Yeah. Right. Well, do we even know who the first black DJ was? You would think because of us as hip hop heads, we take that back to you know the hip hop being born in New York, the mecca. Right. We thinking Grandmaster Flash, Marley right. Ball, you know the guys that like Nas was running with or looking up to and listening to when he was a little, right. you know, right. but, but so this goes way, before, way back from that. And, uh, and obviously this see? jockey at the time is not the what you know right. today, right? This is actual sitting in the front of the radio and, and, and spilling your beans and playing some music. Mm -hmm. uh, 1947 in Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, James Alley, Pat Patrick. First black DJ. First black DJ in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. You in know what's, what's funny with this is some of the hardest territories or regions of our country that have manipulated black the black community at the same time mm -hmm. are where a lot of first opportunities are born. Which is well, crazy. Like Louisiana, you got the the mayor in the eighteen hundreds. Right. A black man in Louisiana right. being mayor. Right. Well, I, but it's 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 not to be completely coincidental because right. So so slavery was more pronounced in the South. So mm -hmm. that's the the ratio of blacks south to north were probably much greater. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, and, and, and six to one could be at the time. And, right. And as human nature has no taught us, or if you don't know about now, human nature is where you are, you're comfortable. Right. Despite whether you right. like it or dislike it, where you are, you're comfortable. You know your right? devil. Right. And that's so the biggest thing. When, these, when the blacks were released, you're free, you're no right. longer a slave. Guess where they stayed? In the south, on the plantation. Right. But they didn't know nothing. They didn't know anything. They didn't know. We're free, yeah. The, but the, those who were not truly comfortable and, and had the gall and had said, "I'm out of here," right? You know, they Way out. They, they they bolted. I keep hearing about this railroad, and I need to know where this railroad ends. Right. So I'm about to jump on the train. I'm going to go on the underground railroad. Well, we free now. Yeah, it ain't underground no more. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's just the. Uh, you're right because it's the plight. It's because because at the same time it's just like uh, we become conditioned. Right. We become conditioned to that environment. Right. Um, and again, I'm not saying this is the black. This is a human nature. This is human. Right. The people, the people who hate the trailer park, are the most ones most likely you're going to find in the trailer parks. Right. Right. It's right. And there's white people. There's black people. There's just bad. Right. Trailer parks. Trailer park. Right. You know. And that's what I'm saying. It's, right. You get you get comfortable. Where you are, right? Especially, especially if you hate it, right? And the, and the thing is, as far as this is a lot of opportunity until you get to a certain level. When you get to that certain level, I'm gonna cut you off. Can't go past a certain level. We're gonna let you do this. We're gonna let you make this amount of money. Long as I can funnel you and control you and what you're doing, then we're not gonna have a problem. But once you get out of hand, we're going to have a problem. You see, that's America. Well, except for the being a land of opportunity, it's also an opportunity to fail. <laughs> so so what you're 
going to succeed at. So let's say this is you. You're the, you're the seed, and the camera is kind of blurry, but that's right. So this is you. This is your seed, right? This is where you're at, right? And there's levels of opportunity. And the only thing that stops you, just like a, a plant seed, is I'm not going to nurture you. I'm not going to water you. Right. So, okay. So I busted out the first level and you get to this level and you're saying, well, that's, that's too, that's hard. That's too hard. You know? And that's why people nowadays that uh, don't want to get past that level say, I need $15 an hour to, to fry fries. I'm comfortable. Yeah. Right. They're comfortable there. They're not comfortable making $15 an hour. They're comfortable doing fries and they, they're not trying to take that extra pressure and push past that layer that says this is what fifteen dollars an hour feels like. Because at the same time, that fifteen dollar mentality is right here in the center. That's the hood. That's the ghetto. That's where we grew up. That's where we learned to rob and steal from each other. Right. This is not what we learned to read. This is this is not what we learned our fundamentals to make it out of life. For some reason, that little line was that one person that got out of that situation came back and spread it to others. That's how we're going to break out of that cycle. Because that one person, he was the first person to qualify for a loan and say, hey, my people, this is how you qualify for a loan. Hey, my people, this is how you want to get this house. Hey, my people, this is how you want to buy this car. Because they're not going to give it to us here. Because why? Because we live here, and this is where they want us to live. Right. It's when we start creeping out these circles and branching out to other loops, this is when we're going to start striding. Right. This is a reason why. But then at the same time, you can't latch on that guy. So, well, why do I need to get a loan for a car? Why can't you just let me borrow your car? It's not how it works. No, nah, why don't I give you my I, car? I worked this hard to get this far. Why the hell am I going to drag your ass along? No, nah, you you're need just, to walk. You're dead, you're dead weight back there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Damon Jones, right? But I'm going to give you the job. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a ride. Right. I got a bus system. Yeah. You just need to make it here. Y you all know Damon Jones, right? Nope. FUBU. Yep. Okay. He's on, no. Okay. He's, on, he's, on the, he's part of the Shark Tank guys. Yep. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. So he's a black man. And, and he, he and he does for his community. But he's not going to go around and giving people free rides just because he's a black man and another black man because like, man, why don't you give, give me some of your money, man? Because that's not how it works. Well, he, he didn't go around saying, go give me some of your money. He said, hey, I got this shirt. You want to buy it? That's what he did. I got the shirt. You want to buy it? He hustled. He did his side thing. He did his thing. He he broke past these 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 barriers, these pressures, and said, I want to get I want to get here. And it requires this much effort. It requires, you know, well, I don't want to be rejected. It requires this many no's and one yes. Right? It requires this many no's and one yes. And that's what all these people went through. That's they went that. through all those no's to get, to get to that one yes. Those people on this board behind us got that yes. Eventually, they got that yes. But there's that one name in particular I still think should be young. She, right here, Sapor Potter Atkins. First lady to own her land in Boston, Massachusetts. The British are coming. The British are coming. Boston, Massachusetts. Can she even be on a, a coin, please? Something? 1670. 1670. Black lady. Not black man. Black lady. It's even harder for black women to make money in the 60s. Hell, it's hard for a black woman to make money in the damn 2000s because it still has this, oh, well, men get more. There's that invisible table there. But we're talking about the 1600s. She bought land. I don't see her in a history book. I didn't know about this woman till today. Until today. To me, that's a shame. That's a shame on my part. Because you know what? Like they said, if you want to keep something from a black person, right. you put it in a book. So the I'm not reading enough books. Let, let me ask Are you we? all this. So our big thing is Juneteenth. Well, not Juneteenth, well, Juneteenth but Juneteenth, that's, that's right. right. But um, there's also uh, the another amendment, I forget mm -hmm. it off the top of my head, that finally allowed the blacks to vote. Oh, 
right? Oh, man. Do you all know who the first black voter was? A black man? There was a black man. There you I'll go. Give you that. I got it. That's a 50-50 chance on that you. one. Black man. Got it. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a good chance we're going to be black man because women weren't quite weren't right. allowed to vote at that They weren't allowed to vote. But his name is Thomas Mundy Peterson, 1870. Well, I have another question then. Women weren't allowed to vote. Right. When women were allowed to vote, were white women given the opportunity to vote before black women, or were they all allowed to vote? No, it was, yeah, it was women because black women were allowed to vote. They just still right. had to just go into... You know, how did that process go? You know, well, what I mean? but the, the black woman was still the same as the black man, uh, a five sevenths vote. Correct. Correct. So they were just, you know. Correct. One more I want to tell you about that invented the elevator was a black man. His name was Alexander Miles in 1887. The black man invented the elevator. And we, elevator every goes. time we get into an elevator, we go up and down. Now y'all know. Yeah. Oh, the elevator is invited by a black man. Yeah. That's the one thing you know. You go to a courthouse, a hospital, high school, if it's three levels, you know, four levels. They have those now. But, got yeah, before him, it was those little, level. those pressure uh, walls. Right. <laughs> or the ones that you slide. Gates. It was just a gate, and you're like, you, and you saw the ground. Uh, and, uh, so he decided, <laughs> said, you should probably put a door there. It's probably a little, a little safer. safer. A little bit of the door. See, he's smarter. Yeah. See, he, yeah. he like 3M. Yeah. They don't invent the product. They just make the product better. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's crazy with it. But, you know, it's just like a lot of things. We're talking into a microphone. Black man invented the microphone. Co-invented, I should say. James E. West, 1964. Electronic microphone. James E. West helped co-invent the electronic microphone, 1964. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. We don't know these things. We're not giving these things. But these are part of history. And my whole thing, the whole point of this is not, is not black history. It doesn't have to be black history. It's history. It's American history. Regardless if it's um, the, the Battle of the Bulls, it's history. You know, from the Battle of the Bulls to the fucking Great Wars, to the civil rights, to the riots. It's all history. It's not doesn't have to be the label yeah. of black history because when and my whole yeah. thing is but, it is a part of American but, history. Absolutely. And but, I know we're but, but at the signifying same signifying the greatness of our at black. The, but at the, at the same time, you though, know, your history classes are are built upon the major milestones of, of America leading up today. And you know you they don't talk about uh, the white, the white, poor white farmer who actually invented the tele television. They talk about the people who took it. And became, you know, but they don't even talk about television. They just you talk about how television was a big upbringing in America, mm -hmm. but not not the guy who invented television. Um, they don't talk about uh, the first. Uh, well, let's say the first radio station, but they, I've I've went to class with where they talk about the first radio station, which is. Uh, uh, in ABC, uh, which is in Philadelphia, and then, um, but uh, to to separate these histories, to to keep these importance alive, is you know we we need to have that separation. But again, we need to continue the education of of the Black history. And not just, okay, it's the New Year's, so let's talk about Martin Luther King again. Let's talk about, you know, it's like, okay, we, we talk about Martin Luther King, right? You can make it per grade. So first grade, talk about first, second, third grade, you probably talk Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, now Barack Obama, because, you know, the president's a big deal. And then once you get to fourth, fifth, sixth grade, you know, you can talk um, uh, the first uh, playmate of the year, whatever. Uh, and then from seventh grade, uh, you know, you, you, you playmate of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So wait. So educate me. Black woman was a playmate of the year when? Yeah. So actually, the first black playmate centerfold, which is the you know the monthly centerfold, the one you got. Mm hmm. That's just yeah. yeah. So guys mm -hmm. was uh, uh the March issue, nineteen sixty five. Okay. Of playmate. Uh, yeah. So that's Playboy. Of the Playboy magazine. So yes. when was Playboy originated? Born. I would say it was. I was get this wrong. Sixty-five. No, no, no. You said was, no. Uh, she was sixty-five. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
Um, I think it was 1950s. So it took 20 years before Playboy. Yeah, it took two years. Teen, oh, 65, you said 1950s? Yeah. Okay, it's so about 10, 15 years before. I want to say, I don't know if it's correct or not. Before Playboy it, felt comfortable. Because Marilyn Monroe was the first. Right. The first big. Uh, right. If you find that, that's a, like a $100,000 issue. So if you're uh, rummaging through your granddaddy's uh, closet right. or in your uh, attics and you come across a stack of Playboy, look for that. It's going to have a red cover uh, with a woman in white. Uh, it's gonna be, it will be Marilyn Monroe. If you find it, especially if it's in great condition, take it, sell it. It's you'll have some money. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so the yeah. first Playboy, Playboy started. Yeah. Issue. Yeah, 1953. 1953. 12 so, years. Uh, yeah. 65, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. So 12 years. 12 years. 12 years before it was comfortable. And then when she came on, was it like, okay, we were not introducing a, a continuous of black women into Playboy? Of course, of course. Uh, because then by uh, first Playmate of the Year was 1990, uh, Renee Tienshaw. But you still yeah. have to, you still can't saturate. See, it's funny because when it comes to the black man or black woman over history, you can't just saturate any market with the black man or black woman. And history shows it. For instance, Playboy, okay? You can't just say, all right, my next is you, I'm gonna have two, three black women in there because to white America still, that the black uh, uh, playmate, you, you know, you fear that you're gonna lose marketing, you're gonna, you're gonna lose money because people are gonna like, oh, well, Playboy is now they're just they're showing black women in there. I don't wanna see that because you still have ignorance at that time. You still have ignorance today, but ignorance is always born, is always there. So you can see why, okay, that didn't, we can't just saturate it with a whole bunch of black women in the Playboy magazine. Yeah. Second example, sports. When basketball came around, basketball was a segregated sport. Yeah. Regardless, basketball, the, yeah. before the NBA, there were two leagues, the NPL and the BAA, something like that. Then they combined to one. That was a segregated sport. They only had one black player on the team at the time. It wasn't until the 1970s when, or late 60s to early 70s when you started incorporating two to three to four black players on the team. But at the time back then, no, it was only one black player that was on the team. Same thing in football. Same thing in baseball. Go back and look at the history. Hell, hockey, it's it. shit. Hockey didn't even want to even acknowledge the black hockey league they had. It's only now that hockey said, oh, you know what? We're going to start looking back into that and see, you know, the uh, the significance and the relevance and the evidence of a, of a black hockey league back in the day. Well, yeah, there was one. Hell, it's through history, you had to do the research. But unless you're a hockey historian, you're not going to know that. Or unless you know somebody that's going to be like, yo, you know, did you know this? They didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. But it can't be saturated. You see, now, when you take upon the influence of, like you said, um, the influence of music, the influence of sports, take music, for example. The music we hear nowadays, oh, this is the jam, this is the shit. The music we hear nowadays is garbage. When it's coming from the black community, it's garbage. And it's all directed because of the big name label white guy. Because he's saying, no, we don't want you to produce uplifting music. Why? I can't make no money off of good harmer shit. The 70s and that all oh, la la Woodstock shit is gone. It's about violence and sex sales. So I need to keep the community on edge. I need to keep y'all getting at each other. I need to keep beef going. I need to keep bullshit going because this stirs the pot. This stirs money. And because my followers are so simple minded, that's all that they want to gravitate to because when you look at TV, it's all sex and violence and Gossip and dirty shit. Everybody want to be a fucking Kardashian and shit. This is what's going to pop. This is what I'm making money. So why do I want conscious shit up there? That don't make no money. You know how many motherfucking good music conscious musicians there are on the underground? Because they can't crack here no more. Gone are the Jill Scotts. Gone are the Commons. They don't want them out here no more. Tell me the Qualies. They don't want them out here no more. Why? They can't make no money off of that. Bullshit. But that's not what the core, and you see what we're having. We got a divisive ass president. 
We got fucking Russia talking about, oh, I'm down for a missile crisis if you want to have one. It's war. It's war. It's turmoil. It's conflict. It's violence. It's everything that's going to generate more interest for somebody to see what the fuck is going on so I can get your dollar. So why don't I want to give you the good shit? Because when you're happy, you're going to sit at your house, you're going to make babies, and you ain't going to do shit. You ain't going to argue with nobody. You're not going to go buy guns. You're not going to go buy shit to protect your home because you're going to be live. You're going to be in a, what, content with life. It's satisfied. So there's no turmoil. So how am I going to generate energy off of calm peacefulness? We can't have that. Why? Well, well, so go on, on the whole music thing. So I always look at, at Michael Jackson, right? Yep. So so big, right? So with a question mark and, and, on and, purpose. And, and I, I find it interesting because because black people call him, believe him to be a sellout, and, and white people argue whether or not he's black or white. Some, so, some, not all on the sellout because double handed, right? You can say because. Uh, black people say he a sellout, but at the same time, they sing in all his fucking songs. Right, exactly. <laughs> Cause, exactly. Cause Michael, like, <laughs> right? Thrilling. And, you know what I'm saying? And, Billy Jean. I mean, yeah. Right. And, and to not to not <laughs> hold time. Yeah. To not hold him up. So, so Michael Jackson Thriller mm -hmm. became the, the the first album to ever sell thirty million times platinum. Yep. First album. Yep. And it was. From nine, uh, it started in 1982. That's yep. when it was released, November 1982, yep. and it reached 30 million by uh, 2019. It's fucking. Or, sorry, 2019, tw uh, 2009. Sorry. Right. 2009. It held the number one all-time number one U.S. selling album. Yep. 2009. Yep. That's when it got gained its popularity, and because that's when MJ yep. died. Yep. Right. So it hit number one, and it took over the Eagles' greatest hits. Not, not the Eagles. It's Eagles, their greatest hits from mm -hmm. 71 to 75. It overtook that album. And it held that spot from 2009 to 2018 mm -hmm. when Eagles' greatest hits it was recalculated and it, it popped up uh, three more ahead of, ahead of that. Right. So, or sorry, five five more ahead of that. Right. 30, 38 million is right. what they're at. Right. Or 38 times platinum. Right. So, Michael Jackson, this black man. Doing what he loves, not hearing the no's. He's the yeah, he's a yes, 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 yes. He gets the yes all the way up, mm -hmm. right? Doing the things, the thing that he loves, the dancing, the, the, the music, music, the, making the music he wants, uh, working with Quincy Jones for crying out loud, yeah. another black man, producer, right? He that, just lost us on the face paint. Right. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and, then, and now, just just recently, again, the Eagles overtook to, right. to number one again. Right. But that's only in the U.S. Worldwide, he's still Michael Jackson it's like is the, still the number one the album. Number the, one the main. Eagles don't even touch that. Worldwide, he's sixty-six million albums sold for Thriller. Worldwide. And, and Talk. Even, I mean, and even and even go, go back to the U.S. So so the the Eagle album that that. Overtook Michael Jackson is a greatest hits album. It's a collaboration album. So technically, Michael Jackson Thriller is still the number one selling studio album of all time. He said, "I got more juice in this one album than you have in your whole collection." Right. And and, and, the, and number three, number the number three selling album is is Eagles again, Hotel California, which right. is the album right after the greatest hits. Right. Right. But then number like four or five. Is Michael Jackson bad? Yeah. So it's between Eagles and Michael Jackson. They, they own the top five. I mean, albums of, of all time in U.S. sales. God, and Michael is just so big. He was just that is one person that got so big. Jay just didn't know how to control him. Right. Because when he was Black Michael, he was controllable. Right. When he was Jackson Five Michael, we can control him. Yep. Music industry could control him, direct him, all that. Uh -huh. When he became white, Michael, that's when people start saying, oh, you selling out and all this because you want to go, Sammy Sosa wanted to follow your footsteps for some damn reason. I don't fucking know it's, how. It's like that, uh, why? that Saturday Night Live skit when uh, 
Man. When uh, Eddie Murphy put on the white face and he saw her walking the city, and he was like, oh, it's okay, you're white. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. You, you see all the, the underground uh, bits of being white. Yeah, man. It was <laughs> you crazy. Want to take, oh, it's okay. You can take the papers. It's right. <laughs> like, Michael was so. Michael had government officials coming to his feet, dog. Right. Michael go to China. He got the royalty. He, How do you pull out a dictator from his throne? to come greet you when it comes to your country, right? What kind of person has that power? Right. Black Michael didn't have that power. White Michael had that power. Right. Uh, think about that. You, you go, you even go think back, so uh, y'all know who Weird Al Yankovic is, yeah, right? Yeah, right? that's some Weird Al. You, you didn't know who Weird Al was until he redid Michael Jackson. That's right, when he right? did the bag, everybody yeah. was rolling. He did, he did eat it and fat. Prior to that, he had like three hours prior to that. Yep. And After? he was, yeah, he was considered a, a, a satirical, not even magi a, magi a, mag a musician. He was mm -hmm. satirical. He was a, he was an act. He was a, a hack. He was just mm -hmm. this guy. And then, you know, he. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about by, about Jacko is that he, you know, he was very giving to the community. And you know, he's like, where Al talks about all the time. Like I approach him, mm -hmm. you know, very humbly. Say, you know, I just what I want. It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you think it'll, it'll do good, you know, you, you know, obviously you're not dragging my name to the to the mud. Right. You know, it, it, he didn't really care about that, but like it's going to be controversy. Good and and boom, wow, ratings, controversy. It's just like, okay, where's the limit? It's not one. It's not a limit. As long as, as long as we have the urban community being urban, there's no limit. As long as we have strife, we have hard life, and as long as we can keep hip hop in its current state, there's no limit. There's no limit. You got motherfuckers now inventing names just to rap. You got rappers that just want to put tattoos and colorful prints on their face because right. they seen somebody else doing right. anything, and hey, I want his fame. Right. You don't want his fame. Six nine, for example, he think he want that fame. Yeah. That motherfucker don't want that fame. Want he ain't that. built for that life. Yeah. Nah, he he's don't want that fame. That's why he's snitching right now. Yeah. He don't want that. Yeah, and he's six nine. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Takashi six nine. Oh, Takashi rapper. You know. Is he Asian? Uh, no, yeah. he's. Uh, don't think he's Asian. He's really, uh, I don't know. It could be Filipino. Okay. Uh, I think he is a off the okay. Asian descent instead of the Latin line. He could okay. be. Okay. You know, but. He ain't about that life, man. He don't want that life. Sure. That motherfucker sit up there facing 47 counts and shit, snitching like, ah, ah, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 sure. blah, 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 blah. I was just doing this because of blah, 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 blah. Talk about it, be about it, baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But let's not get off topic. But yeah, so we just want to pop off messages. All these people on this board behind us are of significant value. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to play the I want you to think introspectively today about certain shit. Right. That's all. We did a little role reversal today, just to go ahead and open up minds from a different point of view. Yes, the black words and all that. Yes, we had a little talk about that. But like we say, like I say in one sense, I do I do see the point of sense of how that comes. Is this the point of saying, oh, well, this man is running down the street. Um, well, I shot him. Why? Because I didn't ask any questions to gather understanding. But I just assumed. I shoot first, ask questions later. And we see there's all too much of that yeah. happening. A lot of that. All too much. So a lot of times people just take the time when you look in or stand in for somebody opposite of you, understand where they're coming from, and then go from there. If you don't get along with them, okay. Don't mean you got to say stupid shit to them. Just hey. ignore them. If you got to work with them, just be hey. quiet and do your thing. Put some headphones in and you don't have to invite them. them back to your house. Right. So. You're not breaking bread, <laughs> beers, and all that. Yeah. You know, just say, bye, foo foo. I am unbothered by you. Yeah, you're in your part of the building. I'm in part, my part of the building. We're good. That's the saying this year. I am unbothered by you. That's how you do it. It's like you saw and then just roll off. You know what I mean? That's the message. Okay. <laughs> anyway, though, you know, that concludes the black mistake. So, wow. I see the time. Yeah, we're gonna, So, I think we got to hit our music assignment, and we're going to have to.
Okay, Micro Machine. We have two music signings. The first one was uh, a guest from last month yeah. was. Uh, Akram at, Aleem. Yes. Uh, Great Lake Harmonics. Great Lake Harmonics. Busting that one. Dope. Underground, yeah. conscious rapper. Yeah. Love him. Has a soulful, a soulful feedback on it. Yeah. Reminds me of other greats. Uh, Gangstar, Guru, you know, uh, greats like that. Uh, my man's dope. Need to check him out. Secondly, I had a. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, my take is uh, it's very that uh, neo jazz, mm -hmm. yeah, sort of like along the lines of Erica Badu mm -hmm. and and like you said Mitch or Jill Scott, uh, mm -hmm. but they're more they're more jazzy R and B. His his more uh, rappy jazz like mm -hmm. I guess Raz Razzy. Yeah, the rap. voice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So because you know it's the music is very jazzy and and he's more but he has a, a rap tongue whereas. Mm -hmm. With Erica and, and Jill, there is jazzy music with with uh, hip hop tones, and then they they sing they sing the jazz. Right. So yeah, he's very um, razzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, a lot of great songs on there. I I enjoyed uh, "Peace Be With You." Yeah. I, I I go that long into it because yeah. of our time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, actually, there was a, a guest rapper on one of the songs, John Q. I, I think I would like to hear a little more of him. Yeah, he yeah, had two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, like he was a good vocalist. I'd like to hear more of him. So, going on to our long awaited uh, music assignments from December. Mm -hmm. No, no, but November. Mm -hmm. This goes, this sounds back from November because mm -hmm. December, I did my own show as, as me. Mm -hmm. And then we did last month, which was. Mm -hmm. So this month, mm -hmm. uh, I got to review uh, Rampage, Scouts Honored by Way of Blood. Mm -hmm. So uh, my take on that, so the big song that came off of that was the um, uh, Wild on the Night, mm -hmm. which is a great song. But I love the song right after that, which was um, Take It to the Streets. I thought that was uh, way more... Right. Yeah. If you release that song today, it would be one of the, one of those dance craze things. Right. You know, I I think that has a much more fun tone. And uh, the little girl on there, uh, Billy Lawrence, uh, sh she was an amazing vocalist. I, I I would like to hear some more of her right. as well. Um, uh, the next song, a couple songs after that, um, was uh, "Conquer the World" mm -hmm. with uh, Mecca. And yeah, she was great. That was a great song. Yeah, it was a great album. I, I enjoyed that album quite a bit. One word. I had, well, first, I had Aerosmith, yeah. Pump. Yep. One word, Pipes. Aerosmith, first of all, the cover, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Why you want to show your crotch? Second of all, why rockers wear a lot of makeup? I don't know why. That's a thing. That's good. Okay, I got it. Um, third of all, the guitar strings. Yeah. Okay, there's talented people, and then there's damn. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And my Pink Floyd was like, yo, I'm just, just blown away by it. But then you have damn. Dude's pipes, though, man. Yeah, he's got those. I'm, I'm just. He's got those crazy hands. Dog, the pipes. Yeah, that's what he's known for. Dude, when that's you what, sing rock, you. That's when the girl. That's why the girls love him. The pipes, dog, because when you sing rock, you, you hurry up, just motherfucker. I got it. I'm yeah. like, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's, the pipes, dog. Yep. That's all I can say, and that's the beauty about music. You know, it's the beauty about um, going through new doors you've never been. That's yep. the that's the beauty about having a discovery, a, a open mind. Right. That's you why know? why archaeologists become archaeologists, paleontologists become paleontologists. Right. Uh, they want to discover that thing that's just been lying around dormant that they've never seen before. Right. You know, it, to me, that's you know, um, that's the beauty of getting rid of ignorance. Mm -hmm. 
is to say, you know, I'm not, I, I don't like this. No, let me listen to it and actually see what it is. And I think so much open that door and knock that when you introduced me to Pink Floyd, that really started that yeah. open door. So but, um, you know, but yeah, I'm amazed with it in the sake of time. That's what we have. You know, we got some football and. and oh, we got to do the next assignments. Oh, the next assignments. Yeah. Um, the next assignment. Oh, we're not doing poetry. Why was I going to give you a poetry? For some reason, I was thinking I was going to hit my man with the spoken word you joint. Do that. I'm, I'm down. You know, but I'm no, down. no, no. I'm, I'm going to keep you on. I'm going to keep you okay. on the, um, the the rampage thing. Okay. Because uh, we have um, uh, rampage. The, the chick of the squad of the uh, uh, squad of uh, Rod Digger, you know. So I want you to, and you know, for one, D Rod Digger is Rod Digger. Just Rod, Rod Digger, man. Rod Digger's a badass MC. Okay. Okay. Let's just say I'm gonna say she a badass All MC. Right. Um, Imperial. Uh, let's see if I'm thinking. I think that's the cut of hers because these are all part of the the uh, Buster Ryan squad. Okay. So that's what we're going through the flip mode squad thing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, her album, um, which was the first one she did. This one is hardcore. Dirty Harriet. Okay. And that's a badass album. Y'all know who Rod Digger is. That's the first female MC in, in a, a flip mode squad with Buster Ryan. You know, Lieutenant First Lieutenant Rampage, Baby Sham. Um, and, um, uh, man, Light Skin Cat, Run With Him. That's my dude, too. I ain't popping a blank, but. You know, Ice? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, it, it's gonna come to me. But that's who you have. You have Dirty, Dirty Harriet. Um, that's who it is, and I will let you know who that the oh, other yeah. the, the, the other member is that I am. Well, I'm forgetting, but go ahead, continue okay. to. In so the, time. the album I'm giving to you, mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the all time greatest selling country music albums of all time. Um, Hank Black. No, no. Um, probably one of the greatest Black. beloved. Artist of all country music. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one. His persona. Lord have mercy and split star. That's yeah. everywhere. Go ahead. So his persona is what changed country music to what it is today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even though he is still very honky tonk and he's who he is, mm -hmm. um, country music has tried to emulate emulate that feeling, mm -hmm. and that's why it's changed to be more. Uh, woman, uh, um, not woman friendly because it's, it's more like uh, uh, the guys in the tight jeans and the and the you know Men, sexual male, you no know, like like women friendly friendly males as opposed to that's like, what they call these metrosexual dudes. Okay, well, that's what they call it. I I'm like Charles I'm like Charles Barkley. I'm so old school dog. Yeah. I don't believe no tight ass jeans grabbing your nuts. I don't believe no wearing no damn slacks yeah. and. With your fucking ankle showing, you might as well wear some goddamn culottes, man. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. I ain't, man. Whatever. So, anyways, the, this is the god, the godfather of, of modern country music. Um, it's one of my favorite albums of all time. It's Garth Brooks' No Fences. This is the one. This is his, his second album. So you know, if you like it and you want to go deep, the first album is probably the better album. No Fences. No Fences. This is this is his. Uh, the big, the big album. This is the one that. This is the one that made him big. Yeah, this is the one that's like. Got him on that Yeah. Uh, okay. His his song is on this. Uh, even reached into the pop album or pop billboards. Okay. Okay. That's what you know. It made the way for Taylor Swift. It made the way for uh, Rascal Flatts. It made the way for any, any of those guys who who have uh, Shania Twain who have. Went from country to be onto the pop chart. Okay, no doubt. We're gonna check them out. Cool. All right. As you know, we want to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, As thank always. you. I do have a I hate salmon. We ain't even gonna go into that. I know how hilarious it is for y'all, but then the sake of time, like we said, we appreciate you guys staying these little nine minutes extra today. Yep. You know, but you know we got to roll. But do please do come back next episode. 
you know, yeah. uh, March. I don't even have a right date yet, but uh, still. Last week of March. Last um, Saturday of March. I, I have the idea for what the episode is going to be. It's kind of a surprise because I haven't d- discussed it with my, my co-host yet. Um, it's one of the things I'm most excited I wanted to do with him. So I'm really hoping he uh, goes along with it. So we'll, I'll make a, a post annou- announcement uh, after the show, after I discuss it with him. Is the wall of cemetery at nighttime? I'm not going to say no. Okay, see, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no. BNW show <laughs> one at gmail.com, <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we apologize for the inconvenience. All day. Peace.